hello everyone we are discussing the nature of stress strain curve for different material okay in the stress strain curve we can get various parameters like initial modulus yield stress yield strain okay this we have discussed and the na total nature of curves this stress strain curve we have discussed okay so this region beyond the yield point so after that the due to rearrangement of the molecules so this curve again it increases and the nature of curve depends on the molecular structure of fiber and the fiber structure of yarn so if the fibers in the yarn are aligned towards the axis then stress strain curve will be entirely different than the fibers which are twisted so depending on the twist characteristics the stress strain characteristics will change now let us see different fibers different yarns how do they change how their stress strain characteristics change so this is wool and wool has got this stress strain characteristics where the with the diff small increase in stress the it get gets strain very high strain so it's got it has got very high extensibility okay but on the other end flax has got very less extensibility so this is mainly due to the difference in their molecular structure now for same fiber okay polyester so polyester it's a low oriented polyester partially oriented polyester and fully drawn polyester okay so in case of same fiber if we can orient the molecule okay the stress strain curve will totally change so this is basically a low oriented polyester as we have discussed earlier this nature is mainly due to rearrangement of the molecule okay so molecules get straightened aligned towards the axis so during that time the strain is very high okay but in case of fully drawn yarn fdy it has been aligned oriented so that's why it takes higher stress with smaller strain okay so rigidity of the that fdy is much higher than loy okay which is expressed by initial modulus now another example where normal cotton is treated chemically treated after chemical treatment both stress and strain normally changes so here it shows the cotton becomes weaker okay and it has got its the lower breaking stress okay so the stress strain curve also changes with the chemical treatment now as i have mentioned with the increase in twist multiplier for staple yarn it gets changed the stress strain curve stress strain characteristics get changed now here we can see that in green curve it shows it's a say normal yarn okay normal yarn and with the increase so here it's a, this is the characteristics and when the twist is increases so tm2 tf this is tm1 which is lower and increase to tm2 twist multiplier 2 then twist multiplier it's a highest tm so as the twist multiplier increases the fiber the yarn become stiffer and stiffer that means initial modulus is increasing because the fibers are the 
uh, packed together packed in a better way okay for better packing due to this better packing that is initial modulus increases the yarn becomes stiffer okay but that as the twist increases initially this is the curve the strength increases this is due to the the increase in the frictional contact but beyond certain point when we move beyond tm2 to tm3 what happens due to the obliquity effect of the fiber so actual final breaking stress drops although the initial modulus is higher so this total yarn characters total stress strain character characteristics looking at the stress strain behavior one can predict what is happening in there so these are the different factors which affect the stress strain behavior of textile material now we will discuss another terminology which is called work of rupture or it is called that is uh, the area under the curve work of rupture is nothing but the energy required for break okay due before its rupture okay. so it's a measure of toughness of material okay this is work of rupture is very important for many applications like one example in mountaineering rope okay so it's not that the strain the stiffness of the material which is important which is the important is that how much shock how much energy it can absorb before it fails. So, that is important. So, there are many applications where the energy required to before breaking like in weaving it is not the strength of the warp yarn which is important it is the work of rupture of the yarn which it is important because during the shedding and beating operation the yarn has to actually withstand the energy okay energy required to break that's that's important and it's not important that which the it's a which is the stiffer one or which is a, a stronger one a strong yarn very strong yarn with very high stiffness that means very low elongation or low work of rupture like there is two yarns we can talk this is cotton yarn another is a suppose st still a still wear strength is very high but stiffness it is very very stiff and here it is say high carbon steel wear now here if we see the area under the curve what is the area under the curve for cotton this is the area under the curve that means energy required to break the cotton fibre yarn will be this one but on the other hand if we see the steel wire the breaking energy required will be this much okay. that means the cotton requires higher energy than steel although steel is extremely very high so the question is which one will be suitable for weaving if we use the steel wire in as a warp in weaving it will immediately break it will start breaking it will its performance will be very poor and as compared to cotton cotton will do much better performance okay it will have much better performance so not only in weaving there are many other applications like a parachute in parachute even in the parachute fabric or the rope when the paratrooper jumps okay so the work 
of rupture that is the energy before it breaks it has to be very high otherwise it will fail. Okay. So, in that way textile material has got its advantage. Okay. So, it is the energy or work required to break a specimen okay. that means the area under the load elongation curve that is area of the shaded zone that is the, the work of rupture. Now, we can see the animation here. This is the load in longer cut. We should we must uh, be very careful. This is the area under the load elongation curve, not the stress strain curve, because it is the energy, okay, load and that is force and multiplied by the elongation. And this is the work of rupture, okay. So, area under the load elongation curve. Now, what will be the unit of the load f? Unit of work of rupture. So, unit of work of rupture is the gram force multiplied by centimeter. That is the that is force multiplied by distance that is the work of rupture, but for practical purpose for, for comparison purpose what we do this is the work okay. because w is proportional to the cross sectional cross section. Okay denier w is proportional to denier and also it is a length. That means, if the denier is higher it is a denier it is a coarser denier or coarser takes then it will be the work required force required to break will be high okay. that is why the W work is proportional to the denier and also as the initial length, initial length of the specimen is high then the work requirement will be high because that extension will be high. So, that work of rupture will be high. So, the work of rupture is actually it changes with the denier proportionally and with the initial length that is why for comparison if we divide these things with the denier and centimeter length. In that case like for we have seen earlier the stress the stress is divided by the, the linear density the gram force is divided by the text just for comparison purpose that we have seen here again if we divide the work of rupture by denier and the length so that we can compare okay we can compare the uh, and if we rearrange this equation then the centimeter will be cancelled out ultimately will remain it will remain it's a gram per denier or gram, gram per text so if someone says that that okay what is the practical the unit of work of rupture it will be gram per denier. So, effective unit will be gram per denier or gram, gram per text for comparison. Okay. Next is that work factor. Now, work factor the concept of work factor is just to understand the nature of curve the curve can be any textile material the curve can be like this or can be like this. Okay. So, for a very stiff material the curve will be initially it will have 
higher stress this is the stress strain. So, initially it will take higher stress then gradually it will break the due to the bond breakage and all this it will have another like wool. So, initially there will be extension then it will increase okay. and there is, there is a ideal curve which will increase with the say so there will be straight line that is ideal material okay. that is a elastic material which will straight way increase. Although the textile material is will not follow this one either this will follow this type of curve or this type. Now, the work factor gives an idea by if we know the work factor value it gives an idea about the, the nature of curve whether the curve is following this type pattern or this type pattern. So, always we do not have the uh, curve in front of us, but if we have the work factor value then we can tell it is the, the nature we can actually guess the nature of curve. Now, let us see the animation here. Now, this is the ideal curve okay, where the work factor is nothing but the area under the curve this area under the curve divided by breaking stress and breaking strain this is the breaking point. So, what is the area under the curve area under the curve is half of breaking stress and breaking strain. So, this is the area under the curve half of the this base and altitude okay. altitude half height is that stress and base is the strain. So, and divided by the breaking stress and breaking strain. So, in that case if we it cancelled out so re it remains half. So, work factor will be half in case of the ideal elastic material. Okay. Now, another material where this is the this there is an increase in this. So, here work factor will be what will be the work factor because area under the curve area under the curve will be more than the this straight line the actual area under the curve will be more. Okay. So, and divided by the breaking stress and breaking strain. So, that means the work factor will be more than half okay. and on the other hand the if we see the other type of curve it shows with the blue line. So, this is the curve where it is a work factor here it is a less than half. So, the by knowing the value of work factor we can guess we can actually predict the what type of nature of the curve. Okay. So, if the curve follows Hooke's law okay, the material follows Hooke's law up to the breaking point. So, it is it, it there is no bend then the work factor will be half. So, it is area under the curve divided by breaking stress and breaking strain okay. and it describes the nature of the curve numerically. Okay. It is not if we do not have the curve in front of us, but numerically it is if it is the value then we can guess we can tell the okay, this is the work one. So, work factor of 0 0.4 if it is asked draw stress strain curve of a material with work factor of 0 0.4. So, in that in that case you have to draw curve like this 0 0.4 okay. work factor of 0 0.4. Okay straight line work factor of 0.5 work factor of this 0.6. So, this type of uh, this type of actually problem it is given in the exam. So, it is given that the curve nature of curve different nature of curve and tell the work factor whether it is a this 0.4 or some values will be given we have to tell the work factor predict the work factor. Okay logically. Now, the term elastic recovery what is that it is the property of a material by which it tends to recover to its original size. 
Okay. So, any material after extension it normally it tries to recover to its original size and shape, okay. but there it may not be 100 percent. So, by the term elastic recovery it is actually one can see one can actually calculate the how much deformation it will try to gain to its size original size and shape. Okay. Now, this is the yarn suppose yarn initially the yarn length is a b a b is the initial length. Okay. Now, it is a load elongation curve now we are extending from b to d we have extended the load has increased okay this up to this point we are not breaking the material and after that we release the material after releasing its load is gradually reducing okay and then it is reaching up to the point c it's not coming to the original point okay so this is the deformation it's called plastic deformation okay and this is the deformation it's called elastic deformation okay where it's recovered now we can see the animation here now it's increasing see this is the initial length of the material so suppose it's yarn ab is the initial length now it's extending and it's increasing and it's reducing okay now this is the, the distance we can calculate a b is the original length a b original length c d c d okay, is the elastic extension c d is the elastic extension where it is come back it is come back and b d is the total extension from b to d it is the total extension and b c is the permanent set okay, that is plastic deformation and from there one can calculate so elastic recovery is the cd what is the recovery divided by total deformation so cd by bd and for perfectly elastic material there will be total recovery that means b c will be 0. So, b d will be equal to b d will be equal to c d that means b c is 0. So, in that case for perfect elastic material elastic recovery will be 1 and for perfectly plastic material that means c d the default it will not come back it will remain at that point okay that it is called at its zero so elastic recovery is zero so textile material most of the textile material they are neither the plastic material nor the elastic material they work on the viscoelastic okay. so it will actually come back but it may not it will there will be definitely some deformation okay if it the it is extended beyond the yield point but if it is extended within the hooken region then we it will come back okay that's why for in for most of the low stress mechanical characteristics it works under within the hooks law, hooks zone so this is ab is the original length bd is the total extension cd is the elastic extension cd is the elastic extension that means it is recovering and bc is the permanent set and elastic recovery is c d by b d c d by b d okay. for perfectly elastic material 
this B D will be equal to C D because it is it has come back. So, B C will be 0. So, perfectly it will recover. So, elastic recovery is 1 and for, for perfectly plastic material that is it is a C D is 0. So, elastic recovery will be 0. Okay. So, there are different applications not only in uh, technical textiles, but in the daily apparel also that bagging effect of garments okay, dimensional stability it changes with the stress characteristics. So, this even with the different technical application. So, we must know the elastic recovery characteristics. Next is that so we can calculate the uh, yarn specimen okay, of 200 millimeter extended by 10 percent when loaded with 500 centinewton force. Okay. That means, when 500 centinewton force is applied, okay, the 200 millimeter yarn is extended by 10 percent. Okay. The length of the specimen after removal of load was found to be 202. So, after removal there is a deformation that is a it is length 202 that means, it was initially 200 now it has become 202 calculate the percentage elastic recovery of the yarn. So, 200 was the initial length and extension was 10 percent loaded 500 by 500 centinewton and final length is 202. Okay. Here the load value is not required because extension value is known. Okay. So, extended length will be at 10 percent of initial length original length. So, 10 percent of original length it has increased. So, it has become 220 millimeter and the final length has become it is a that is the total extension is 20 millimeter and elastic extension is that extended length by final length. Final length was given. So, elastic extension was 18 millimeter. So, 20 millimeter is the total extension and elastic extension is 18 millimeter that means, the ratio of these two will give us the value in percent okay, multiplied by 100. So, it has become 90 percent. So, 90 percent elastic recovery is there. So, one should practice this type of numerical this is the answer. Next is that time dependent effect. Okay. So, time dependent effect is that. So, here it is load is not increased continuously. In earlier stress strain we have seen stress is load is increasing and strain is taking place, but here the material is loaded once okay, and it is kept at that loading condition for long time. So, this type of situation is there in most many technical applications like in geotextile for any application where the material is under constant load for long time. So, for that we must know the stress strain behavior, okay. the strain behavior time and strain behavior what is that load is fixed that this is for geotextile under the ground it is continuously loaded. So, we must know the its strain characteristics, so that we can predict whether it will fail or not. Okay. So, that characteristic is that time dependent extension it is known as the creep. Okay. Now, once it is loaded there will be two types of extension. Suddenly, we are hanging a constant load it is not that load is increasing continuously increasing at certain rate. Okay. Certainly, we are hanging certain load okay. here as per this curve it is loaded. So, 
during that time there will be one instantaneous extension. This is the zone where the material would get extended instantaneously. Then after that it will not stop here, it will keep on in extending. Okay. So, if we see in normal load elongation curve for that particular load value the extension could be like this could be up to this point this is the extension up to this point. Okay. But if we leave let the load remain for long time on the material it has been observed that there will be again continuous increase in elongation it will keep on elongating this elongation is known as the time dependent elongation is known as the creep behavior this is due to the molecular rearrangement okay of the and after that after certain time if we release the load okay again it has become zero and it's not that immediately it will come back so it will try it, it will come back slowly in the initially there will be immediate response immediately there will be sudden drop in strain suddenly there will be contraction but gradually it will come back try to come back but after certain time there will be no reduction in shape or size so this the difference this difference is known as the permanent set okay that is due to, there is that means there will be permanent deformation in the molecular structure now we will discuss one important factors some important factors which affect the tensile result okay the tensile result means that for same yarn same yarn if we change same textile material if we change this parameters the value load value will get changed suppose there is a yarn this is a yarn okay now the yarn cross section its unevenness will definitely be there now yarn will break in its weakest point now if we can plot the yarn the strength theoretically if we can get the yarn strength at different point okay the strength of the yarn will be like this at different point the actual strength will be like this okay so this is say s1 s2 s3 these are the weakest point and now the it's a specimen length we can test the tensile test by this is the yarn sample this is the top jaw this is the bottom jaw and here suppose it is a length L 1 length L 2 length L 3 like this. Okay. If we take this the strength if we measure the strength of yarn by taking this total length total by taking the total length which is L 1 plus L 2 plus L 3. Now, if we take 
suppose this is the top jaw here it is a bottom jaw this length is the it is called it is L 1 plus L 2 plus L 3. If we take this length, so here as per this picture S 1 is less than say S 2 okay, is less than S 3. So, S 1 is the lowest value followed by S 2 and S 3 is little bit high. Now, if we take the gauge length as L 1 and L 2 L 3 a total length if we take in that case what will be the strength of the yarn? The strength of the yarn will be S 1 if we take that means, in this case the strength of the yarn is S 1. Now, now, if we take the yarn another test if we do if we perform in that case. So, here another it is test 1 another test if we take that we are now trying to break we are trying to reduce the size reduce the specimen size. So, this is L 1 L 2 L 3. Okay. Now, if we test the L 1 here this is L 1 what will be the strength? Again the strength should be S 1 lowest. Now, if we test the say L 2 L 2 then the strength will be S 2 which is more than S 1. Again if we take the S 3 it will be S 3. So, in this way if we can reduce the size. Okay. Now, here if we see with the smaller length if we test the mean strength will be. So, L 1 and L 2 if we take the mean strength will be S 1 plus S 2 by 2, because in this portion the strength will be S 1, next portion the strength will be S 2. So, the mean strength if we take the strength mean strength will be S 1 plus S 2 by 2, which is numerically more than S 1. So, that means, if we reduce the size of the specimen for the same yarn same yarn the actual the strength which is actually uh, reported strength will be more, but the yarn is same. So, breaking strength is the load at break at the weakest point of the of a specimen of a specified length. Okay. Now, for length L 1 the breaking strength is S 1 and so on S 1, S 2, S 3, S 4 like this. Okay. Now, with the gauge length of O O dash the breaking strength would be S 1 because it will break at S 1 point. When the test we test two halves, so we can actually divide into two halves. One is O O double dash and this O double dash O dash. So, O dash O O dash we are dividing into two parts. In that case we are getting S 1 plus S 2 by 2 because we are taking two values and then taking the mean. So, that is how so, we are getting S 1 plus S 2 by 2 which is numerically it is more than S 1. So, that means, it is uh, in any standard test method as we have discussed when we are discussing the standardization of testing. So, length of the specimen is specified otherwise to show the higher strength 
one would like to test the material at with a lower gauge length and to show to prove that yarn is poor quality you will start testing with the longer gauge length. So, that is why gauge length effect of gauge length specimen length is very important to be fixed. Okay. So, this specimen length and irregularity. So, hence so here if the irregularity is more, so five the yarn is having higher irregularity in that case S 1 and S 2 the difference of S 1 and S 2 will be more. So, if the irregularity is less in that case S 1 and S 2 will be very close that means, the effect of fiber the specimen length will be less. Okay. So, hence by testing yarn with shorter length the apparent yarn strength has increased. Okay. This effect is known as weak link effect. So, yarn breaks at weakest point and as the as we go on reducing the gauge length apparent strength of the material will increase. Okay. So, for more irregular yarn as I have explained this weak link effect will be more because the S 1 S 2 difference will be more. Okay. Hence, by adjusting the gauge length the test result may be changed. That is why for any standard test that gauge length has been fixed. In any text, uh, testing any tensile testing gauge length is most very important. Okay. It has got direct impact on the test result. So, standardization of gauge length is important. Now, can say specimen length and irregularity. So, this is the regular yarn blue one it is a regular yarn and <coughs> this red one is a yarn with the, which is irregular, but if we see that this yarn with a higher mean length mean strength still the regular yarn with little bit lower mean strength is better. For processing point of view slightly lower average length with regular yarn is better. So, that is why for particularly in weaving for warp yarn it is irregularity is very important. So, we normally do not it is difficult to measure the length strength irregularity because strength value is there strength C B is there. So, which one is important strength C B or strength value. So, first in for weaving particularly in warp yarn it is the strength C B which is important. So, two parameters are given two yarn one yarn is weaker yarn little bit weaker yarn, but better strength C B one should also one should actually go for the better yarn better irregularity with a little bit lower strength. Okay. Now, here this Pierce, Pierce has given actually empirical equation, he has derived empirical equation which shows the effect of specimen length, okay. effect of specimen length on strength. Now, let us see carefully here S L, S L is the length of yarn okay. mean strength of sorry S L is the mean strength measured at the gauge length L. Okay. Higher S L is at lower length. So, S L is actually mean strength of yarn measured at the length L and S R L is the mean strength of yarn measured at length R L. 
what is R L? That is R times of L. Suppose if L is say L is 10 its value, so 10 centimeter. So, R L if it is R L is say 20, so R will be 2. So, 2 times of 10. So, S L is say S 10, suppose 10 at 10 centimeter gauge length, the strength is S L at 20 centimeter gauge length the strength will be S R L where R value is 2. That means, the S R L will definitely be lower than S L always because the gauge so higher gauge length will result lower value. So, S R L is the value which is lower than S L. Okay. So, that means, this value will be less than 1 S R L by S L. So, S L minus S R L equal to 4.1 multiplied by 1 minus R to the power minus 1 fifth multiplied by this is the standard deviation. Okay. The standard deviation of breaking strength, the standard deviation of strength okay, it is a sigma L. This, this formula has been derived by the this is the empirical formula has been derived by peers based on large number of experimentation. Now, just for just by rearranging here what we can get is the S L is the length S L is the mean length mean strength sorry S L is the mean strength of yarn at length L. Okay. Now, we divide both the term both the sides by S L. So, 1 minus S R L by S L and here this right hand side term will be that sigma L that is your it is a standard deviation by the mean strength mean strength standard deviation of strength by mean strength multiplied by 100 it will be the C B percent. So, that means it will that standard deviation by strength will be C B percent by 100 the C B percent by 100. So, this term this this has been rearranged in this fashion. So, this is the equation. So, here from there we can predict the strength at different gauge length. So, this is the term here. Now, here what we can see S R L as we have discussed it is S R L will be less than S L. So, the ratio so from this equation if we just rearrange this equation once again we will get this equation that means S R L by S L equal to 1 minus this within bracket 4 4.2 and this value. Okay. Now, here if we see what will happen if R is 1 suppose r is in this equation r is 1 means is the at the same gauge length we are testing we are not changing the gauge length. r is r 1 means we are not changing the gauge length r is 1 here okay now what will happen r is 1 means this value will be 1 okay and this total value will become 0 1 minus 1 this total value will become 0 that means S L equal to S R L. That means, for same gauge length it is predicted that the gauge length if we keep gauge length the mean length will be same. Okay. We are not taking care of other factors here we are talking only specimen length. Now, let us see what happen if we increase the R L R value. If we increase the R value this R value. So, there will be some positive value here there will be some positive value. So, this value will be reduced will be lower than lower value. Okay. This if we increase it from 1 to some other value. So, this value will be earlier it was 0. Now, what will be the value? It will have some value some uh, parameter this this value will be more less than 1. So, earlier it was 1. So, it is less than 1. So, that it will have some positive value. So, that means 1 minus some positive value. So,
so this value will reduce okay as r value r is increasing gradually so this value will also increase uh, with the increase in r this value will also increase so this right hand side value will reduce will be lower so sl value will srl value and uh, sl is constant so srl value will reduce gradually so that means with the increase in r by srl by sl will reduce so this we can get so if we know v and sl one should be able to predict the srl now if the variability we have seen the variability if variability increases that the yarn strength yarn strength is reducing okay now with this equation here we can see that suppose cu percent is increased if cu percent increases so this total value will increase okay that means this value will decrease so srl by sl will also decrease so this ratio will decrease sl srl by sl this ratio decreases with the increase in the r value that is r value means which means it is the it is the specimen length and the v value v value is nothing but the specimen irregularity. So, with the increase in irregularity and the specimen length the this uh, SRL by SL actually reduces. Okay. So, that means we get the lower strength lower actual lower strength with the increase in the gauge length and with the increase in the variability. Now, another important parameter we are discuss, we will discuss it is a rate of loading and time to break. So, the, the tensile char characteristics the strength of the material it changes with the rate of loading that means at the rate at which rate we increase the rate of extension rate of loading. So, that changes the tensile characteristics earlier we have seen the with the change in the gauge length the tensile strength changes. So, apparent tensile strength changes here also if we increase the rate of loading and time to break. So, then then the tensile characteristics will change. So, most textile materials show an increase in breaking strength with the increase in rate of extension. Okay. So, with the increase in rate of extension the breaking strength will is uh, it is it changes together with decrease in extension that is the nature of any viscoelastic material. Okay. Textile material is one of the most important viscoelastic material. So, due to viscoelastic nature of textile material they require certain time to respond to the applied stress. So, due to this the rate of loading it affects the rate of loading. Okay. Different type of textile material like fiber, yarn or fabric respond differently depending on the structure. So, the, but in general the structure is like this it is called spring dashpot model. So, in the spring dashpot model if we see carefully here it has got two components if in this this is simplest model where these are in parallel spring and dashpots are in parallel. The spring equation is that spring when we apply force f on the textile material this is suppose it is a model for yarn or any textile material. So, here it is any textile fiber also. So, here if we apply force it has got two components f 1 component which is actually uh, represented by spring f 2 component which is by dashpot. So, for a spring the equation is that force increases with the extension suppose we are extending by x. So, the force increases with the extension force is proportional to the extension. So, here f equal to 
k 1 x the k 1 is called spring constant. So, as we increase the extension, so the force will increase it is a proportional way. But in case of dashpot what happened? The equation is that the force increases, but with the with the rate of increase in rate at the rate of extension increases. But in case of dashpot if the rate is very slow rate is low then dashpot will actually exert very low pressure. Okay? So, if it is very low then force will be force will be very less, but as the rate increases the dashpot will actually exact very high force. So, that is due to this dashpot so this k 2 is dashpot constant. So, it is proportional to the d x d t that is the rate of extension. So, as the rate of extension increases so due to the f 2 component the yeah, the textile material actually exert more force actually that that is why the due to the increase in rate of loading or rate of extension the tensile characters apparent tensile load increases. Okay. So, this picture shows that the rate of at lower rate of extension this is the curve and the same material with the higher rate of extension it has become stiffer and it it shows higher strength. Okay. Now, we will stop here we will continue with the with this discussion in the next class. Thank you.